All right. So Jared, Jared Rubin's book um, kind of lays out his theory uh, for why the Islamic world fell behind um, uh, the European world, uh, the Western European kind of Christian uh, world. Um, and he says it has to do with this facet of Islam and that it's very good at uh, legitimating rulers. Um, whereas Christianity is not as good at that. The kind of built into the religion is this ability to legitimate uh, a ruler. Um, whereas, and so when we contrast that to Western Europe, really um, it's going to be the economic powers or the economic uh, uh, elites that legitimate the, the rulers, at least in, in England. Um, whereas in, in the Islamic world, it's going to be the religious elites. And that kind of difference, according to Rubin, will have um, effects on a country's long run uh, development. All right, so in Rubin's framework, he essentially says there are two reasons why you might follow uh, a ruler. If the ruler is legitimate, so you believe, okay, this is our ruler, the, the person in charge is legitimate, like they've, they have achieved that power through legitimate means. Um, and therefore, they have the right to, you know, pursue various uh, policies. Or you may follow them because, you know, you will be shot if you don't. Like, if you don't, you know, uh, you know uh, express fidelity to whoever's in charge, you'll be in trouble. Um, you know, either through, you know, whatever, the secret police, as was happened in, you know, uh, East Germany and, and the Soviet Union, um, or whatever. Um, or the military, something like that. Okay, and so from the ruler standpoint, your goal, if you're the ruler, is just to stay in power. So most people who are in power, they would like to stay um, in power. And so if we're thinking about this, like in a game theoretical standpoint, the ruler is just going to choose the laws and policies um, that allow them to, you know, propagate the rule, to allow them to stay in power. And you see this even in our in the modern society. This is a charge levied against most politicians. They don't have actually any real opinions. They are just saying whatever they think will get them elected. So essentially, they are choosing the set of policies, not that they believe in, but they believe will put them into power and then help them maintain power. So essentially, in the Rubin framework, it's just I want to stay in power if I am in uh, in power. Okay. Um, so one of the ways you could do it is through uh, legitimacy where you say, okay, there's something special about me um, that allow me to, to rule, that I am charismatic um, or, you know, I've proven myself in battle, you know, in, in, in ancient times, um, or, you know, I'm the son of, of, of somebody who was charismatic. Um, and so this may, you, so you may receive that legitimacy through, you know, your, who you are or who your family is. Um, or there may be other agents that are legitimizing you. So this could come from the local elites saying like, this is our guy, whoever's in charge, this is our guy. You go to your mayor, your mayor's like, hey, that's the guy that's in charge, we're behind him. The religious authority is the same thing. Like the clergy could say, this is the person who's been anointed uh, by God to rule, so therefore um, this is you know, the person that is uh, legitimate. Now, if we kind of fast forward this theory up to the present, you know, we do this via our democracy where it's like, okay, we have a system of place. We vote for a person, the person who wins the vote, the popular vote is the, is, well, okay, not in our country with the electoral college, but we have the system, whoever's the winner of this electoral system gets to be the ruler for this time limit. We have these, we have these term limits, um, which is then we do it all over again. And so, you know, that is the system that we use to uh, uh, um, give the ruler uh, legitimacy. And kind of one of the underrated aspects of American history is Washington stepping down after two terms. So Washington is president. And, you know, there are people who want him to just be president for life. Um, you know, King Washington. And he's like, no, 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 no. that's not the way we're going to do things. I'm going to step down after two terms. And it's actually um, until until the middle of the 20th century, that actually wasn't a rule um, in, or it wasn't a law in the United States that a president could only serve two terms. It was just tradition that was set forth by Washington that the most you could serve as president was uh, two, uh, two consecutive terms. Um, and so anyways, that's how it works in the, in, in, uh, in the modern sense. And this is sort of why kind of like faith in that electoral process is so important. Like we need to believe 
uh, that our elections are, are fair um, in order for the ruler to be legitimate, in order for the system to, uh, to function. Okay, so our second option, so that's our first option for ruler, legitimacy. Second option is just outright coercion. So this typically tends to be the, you know, this route is chosen more likely by autocrats, dictators, those sorts of people who are essentially just going to use the secret police or the military um, to enforce uh, their rules. And so in Rubin's terminology, these two groups are the propagating agents. So kind of the elites here that will uh, legit, uh, legitimate, legitimatize, legit, legit, what are, you know the word I'm trying to say, um, legitimatize, I don't know, that doesn't sound right. Well, whatever. Um, so those agents and then the coercive agents are the ones are, are, that make up the propagating agents. So you may think, you know, it's a mixture of both perhaps. Okay. So why does it matter? Um, well, this is going to affect laws and uh, policies. So the propagating agents are not going to just, you know, say, hey, follow this, this ruler, you know, they're, you know, just because they like the ruler, they want to get something in return. Um, and so they're essentially paid in laws and, and policies, or they may be explicitly paid in the case of coercive agents. It's like, hey, you know, I'm, you know, a military officer, I am, you know, enforcing this law or enforcing the rule of this person because I'm being paid uh, to do so. Okay, so here, here is kind of the theory laid out on a nice little graph. So we have the ruler over here. We have uh, that person's goal is the propagation of their rule. We have our propagating uh, agents down here. We have our legitimizing agents over here, coercive agents over here. Um, and their kind of goal with the ruler, they're going to form bargains to get the laws and policies that they want that benefit um, them. And so they'll, you know, the, uh, for the legitimizing agents, they'll say, hey, this person is the right person. As long as you give me these laws and policies, the people who are the coercion, again, the military, the police, they're going to say, hey, if we get the right policies, we, were, we are going to enforce your, your rule. Okay. And so that is the framework that Rubin uh, establishes in his book, a summary of it, at least.